All of the problems covered in my videos can be downloaded at accountingworkbook.com. If you go to the website, click the PDF link, you can download a copy of the workbook for yourself. Also on the website, you'll find links to all of my accounting videos, not just the ones I've uploaded to YouTube. I've uploaded over a hundred extra videos on this website that you can't find on YouTube. So I do hope you'll check out accountingworkbook.com. All right, let's begin our problem. Let's examine problem 12 to a uh, vertical analysis. So just as this was our gesture for horizontal, this vertical, <laughs> this would be our gesture for vertical. Um, where I find vertical analysis really useful and where, where a lot of people do is they actually call these common sized financial statements. And what does that mean? Uh, it means if I want to compare two companies that are of a completely different size, I can use a vertical analysis to do it. So let's say I open a fast food hamburger restaurant and I, I you know, I'm, I'm just a local one uh, store fast food hamburger restaurant. And I want to know how I'm running and if I'm running efficiently. And so I, I want to look up some uh, competitors financial data. And I know McDonald's is a publicly traded company, so I can just look up McDonald's financial statements. But of course, McDonald's has billions of burgers served and, and billions of dollars in revenue. So I look at my little burger shop, maybe it has a hundred thousand dollars in revenue, and McDonald's that has billions, and I, I just I can't bring the two of them together, right? I can't compare two totally different sized companies. Well, that's where vertical analysis is really useful. It's useful even comparing myself to myself, but it's, it's very useful when you're comparing two companies of a different size to each other. You can get some insight into where your company's strengths or weaknesses may be or where the, the relative strengths or weaknesses of the competitors may be. So here's the question. It says, Harpreet Gill is concerned about his company's financial uh, performance and financial position. He's obtained financial statements of his largest competitor, Hossein Inc., and uh, notes that the company is over 10 times larger than his, so it is making the numbers difficult to compare. And sure enough, if we look at these uh, statements here, you know, Hossein Inc. is just way, way bigger than Gill Inc., uh, and we look at the balance sheet and again, it's just near impossible to, to really compare. So it says prepare a vertical analysis for the companies calculating relative percentage of each item in the financial statements. Comment on the common size income statements, comment on the common size balance sheets. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'll do uh, Hossein's first and I'll do it in uh, blue ink. Uh, and I'm just gonna list all of Hossein Inc's items. I'm actually gonna make this a little wider. Let's see if I can't. Yeah, let's do it like that. Give myself a little bit more room. Uh, I'm gonna list everything on Hossein Inc's and I'm ignoring Gill Inc for the time being. I'm just looking at Hossein Inc. Now remember what vertical analysis is, up and down. I don't look left, right, right? Horizontal, I'm comparing one side by side to the other, vertical. I'm computing, all my computations are vertical. They're up and down computations. So here's how it works. You set sales or the largest number, well, sales on the income statement, the, the total revenue, if you, you don't have a merchandiser, you set that, that largest number on the income statement, you say that is 100%. Then every other number on your income statement, you compare to sales. So cost of goods sold is 2.3 million. Uh, let's pull my calculator down here. So for Hossein Inc., 2.3 million divided by sales, 5.6 million. Make sure I have enough zeros, 41.1%. Okay, uh, gross profit, 3.3 million. So I just take that divided by sales. Everything is a percentage of sales. 3, 3, oh, 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 oh divided by 5600000 oh, 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 oh. 58.9% operating expenses 2.2 million okay so let's see 2200000 oh, 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 oh. divided by 5600000 oh, 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 oh. kind of easy for me to say 39.3% 
Now, I could actually just take 58.9 minus 39.3 and get the next line down, but we'll, we'll divide. Uh, 1, 1, oh, 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 divided by 5.6 million, 19.6%. Uh, 60,000 divided by 5.6 million. 60, oh, 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 divided by 5, 6, oh, 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 oh. It's going to be a tiny number, 1%. Oh, 1 1.1 if I round here. 1.1%. 1, 1. 1 uh, 1040. Divided by five six oh 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 eighteen point six percent is my income before taxes. Three hundred divided by five point six million. Uh, five point four percent. So seven forty. Sometimes you end up off by like a 0.1% on these ones, and I would not be worried about that at all. 740 divided by 5.6 million is 13.2%. What I mean is sometimes because of rounding, I might have 18.6, 5.4, and then 13.1, and the math doesn't work vertically, like 18.6 minus 5.4 is 13.2, not 13.1. Anyway, it did work for us, but just because of weird rounding, it can be off. Okay, so I've computed this. I've done a, uh, a percentage basis uh, income statement here, but again, it's pretty useless on its own. Uh, it gives you some data, but I would want to at least compare to Hossein Inc. If I were look, just analyzing Hossein Inc., ignoring Gil. If I were just analyzing Hossein Inc., I would do a vertical analysis for the year before and compare itself to itself. Or as Gil is trying to do here, I would compare to an industry leader, a benchmark. And I would say, okay, well, what is the industry leader here doing? And I would compare my data to there. So that's what we're going to do for Gil. So let's do Gil's. I'll do gills in red. Uh, so we set gills top number as 100%. We're not comparing to Hossein. We're, we're doing a vertical analysis on gill. So we examine gill all by itself. So 100% is gills sales. Uh, gills cost of goods sold as a percentage of sales is 160 divided by 450. 35.6% sales minus cost of goods sold is gross profit. So this is going to be 64.4%. 125 divided by 450 is 27.8%. Uh, 165 divided by 450, 36.7%. So here's a spot where the math doesn't quite work vertically. We're off by a tenth of a percent. It is no big deal. Uh, 5 divided by 450. One point one percent. 160 divided by uh, 450, 35.5%. Oh, 35.6%, pardon me, I rounded poorly there. 48 divided by uh, 450. Ten point seven percent. And um, last one twelve divided by four fifty. Twenty four point nine percent. Okay. So if I didn't know the size of the company. You know, if I ignore the other stuff, if I ignore this part, right? If I didn't know those numbers, whose income statement would I rather have? 
Who is performing better? Well, uh, it is a clean sweep for our smaller company. It is a clean sweep for Gill. Now that said, I'd rather be making 740 grand than 112 and that much money flowing into my pocket. If I were the sole shareholder, I'd be happy to, happier to have Hossein's bank account than Gill's, I imagine. But in terms of just knowing the percentages, Gil is actually outperforming Hossein, and this is a good sign. If you are Gil, you should be very happy with your income statement. Why do I say that? Well, our cost of goods sold is lower, meaning our gross profit is higher. When we sell a good, we make more money off of each good that we sell. Not only that, but our operating costs are lower, meaning there's just more money flowing into our pocket. And those are really the two big ones. The gross profit, the operating income, and the net income percentages are all weighing in Gil's favor. So as I'm analyzing the two, if I were advising Gil, I would say, look, it looks to me like you're performing well. There's nothing out of whack here. I might even be curious. I might say, well, why do you suppose Hossein's cost of goods sold are higher? Is Hossein charging a lower price than you? Or is Hossein using higher quality material than you? Because I would think a bigger company could get a better deal on its 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 inventory than, than a smaller company. So why are you able to have such a lower cost of goods sold? Uh, that would be something I would ask, but it's, it's a good news question, right? Like it's sort of saying, how are you doing so well? Uh, so this is definitely good news for Gill Inc. Let's move down to the balance sheet. Uh, so where on the income statement we set um, the total revenues or our sales revenue as 100%. On the balance sheet, we set the uh, total assets as 100%. So for Hossein Inc., the current assets as a percentage of our total assets, oops, let me pull this down. 1450 divided by 4450, 32.6%, 3 million divided by 4450, 67.4%. Again, doesn't mean much to me at this point. Current liabilities divided by total assets, 500 divided by 4450. 11.2%. Long term liabilities, 1500 divided by 4450, 33.7%. 2 million divided by 4450. 44.9%. 2450 divided by 4450. 55.1%. So that adds up to 100%. Moving over to Gill's side. Again, we're just going to divide every number by total assets here. I'll do it in red again. Uh, 85 divided by 335. Oh, what happened there? 85 divided by 335, 25.4%. 250 divided by 335, 74.6%. This number is, of course, set to 100%. 68 divided by 335 is 20.3%. 120 divided by 335 is 35.8%. Uh, 188 divided by 335. 56.1%, 147 divided by 335, 
43.9%. And of course, total liabilities and charges equity is the same as total assets, so that's 100%. Okay, now let's move this calculator out of the way and let's do a bit of comparison. Um, so, if you, again, were kind of blind, right? You couldn't see whose was whose. You just kind of had these percentages to go on. Whose would you prefer? And I think the answer here is unquestionably, unquestionably Hossein Inc. All else being equal, you would rather be in Hossein Inc.'s financial position. And that's what balance sheet is. Remember, income statement is all about performance and Gil is outperforming Hossein as, in, as we look at those percentages. Uh, Hossein is in a, a much better financial position. Now, what am I looking at to sort of derive that? Well, first of all, we look at liquidity and that's current assets and current liabilities. All else equal, you'd rather have the higher percentage of current assets and the lower percentage of current liabilities and Hossein has both, Cur higher current assets and lower current liabilities. So it's a, in a better liquidity position. The other big thing I'd be looking at is the equity ratio. And I would say, okay, equity as a percentage, you would rather have more shareholders equity than less less isn't necessarily worse but lesser less is a riskier position uh if you have more equity as a percentage it means you can explore getting more leverage you, you're more likely to be able to be loaned money if this is a really big number uh it means the banks are very likely to loan you money or it's very possible anyway if it's a low number it means you've already been lent a lot of money you're already in a lot of debt and it might be hard to get money from the bank so so the fact that the total liabilities are higher and the equity is lower for Gil, it means it's in a worse uh, or at least a riskier financial position. So whose income statement would I rather have? Looking only at percentages, Gil all day. Uh, whose balance sheet would I rather have? Looking at only percentages, I would rather have Hossein's balance sheets for the reasons that I stated. So hopefully this has been helpful for you. Uh, you can compare any two companies. You can compare uh, like Home Depot and Lowe's or, uh, you know, Apple and Google, if you'd like. And, and this is a great way to compare uh, companies that are of a different size from each other. That's it for this video. Stay tuned for the next.